Have you always wanted to solo in the style of the blues on your ukulele, but don't know how to get started? In this video, I'm going to teach you a beginner-friendly blues lick that you can start soloing with, and a simple technique to go along with that to sound bluesy. My name is Brett and I'm from Ukulele Tricks, a website that helps you become a better ukulele player. A lot of new players think you have to be super advanced to ever think about playing blues solos on ukulele, but in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started. Now before I do that, let me recap what I covered in the last two videos. In the first video I taught you how to play the 12 bar blues, and we looked at the specific ways of playing that make a sound bluesy. I showed you how with the 15 minute play to learn method, you can practice very specific techniques to sound bluesy on your ukulele, and how to break out of feeling stiff and robotic in your ukulele playing. In the second video, I taught you the blues scale, which is the foundation for the blues lick I teach you in this lesson. In case you haven't watched the first two videos yet, make sure you do that right now because we covered a lot of important things in those videos, and I don't want you to miss anything before moving forward. I'm really excited to teach you this lick and to get you started with soloing, but first I want to peel back the curtain and demystify soloing a little bit. In the last lesson, you learned the blue scale, which sounds like this. And you started to play this scale over the downloadable backing track to learn the scale and internalize it. But you may have noticed that when people solo, they are rarely just ascending and descending through a scale. They're not going, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. I mean, not unless you're in the sound of music, but even in that song, they aren't just ascending and descending through the scale. No, there's variation, and that variation is what makes it sound musical and expressive. So likewise, in blues soloing, any notes in the blues scale are fair game for your blues solo. But the reason it sounds expressive is because of the variety and change in melody. So what do we do when we know the blues scale like you already do, but we want to start soloing in the blues? We start learning licks. A lick is a short musical phrase or melody that is derived from a scale. In this case, the blues scale. So let's learn this lick. If you know the C blues scale, which I taught you in the last video, then you can definitely learn this lick. Let's break it down. The first technique we need to look at is the slide technique. The slide technique is a simple way to make your blues solos sound bluesy and musically expressive. You can slide up from a note, or you can slide down from a note. To perform the slide up, place your ring finger on the second fret of the E string. If you recall from the last video, this note in the blue scale is the blue note, which has an inherently bluesy sound to it. To slide up from this note, with the ring finger press down firmly, pluck the string, and while continuing to press down on the fretboard, slide the ring finger up to the third fret like so. The trick here is to make sure you maintain adequate pressure from the ring finger to allow the note to ring out. For instance, if you don't maintain adequate pressure, the string won't ring out properly, like this. Instead, press down firmly and slide assertively. You can also slide down from the blue note. So take the index finger and press down on the second fret of the E string. Pluck the string and slide the index finger down to the first fret like so. Again, making sure you maintain adequate pressure. Boop. 
So you want to practice both the slide up and slide down. You might have noticed the finger I use changes depending on which way I'm sliding. The finger I picked to slide is the one I want to assign to the target note. So when I slide down, since the target note falls on the first fret, I want those notes that are played on the first fret assigned to my index finger. When I slide up, since the target note falls on the third fret, I want those notes that are played on the third fret assigned to my ring finger. Okay, great job so far. This slide technique is a super important technique to practice for your soloing because it instantly makes your solo sound bluesier and more vocal-like and expressive. Now that you've learned this technique, it's time to learn the blues lick. Here's what that sounds like again. Okay, let's break this lick down into two sections and make it nice and easy to learn. The first section is the first two bars of the 12 bar blues. In the first measure, we start off by performing a slide up from the second fret to the third fret like so. And as we learn this lick, we really wanna think about counting out loud since that will really help us lock in with that shuffle rhythm feeling of the blues. One and two and three and four and one and three, four, one and four, one and. On the second beat, pluck the third fret of the E string again. Then on beat three, pluck the second fret of the E string on the number beat and then pluck the first fret of the E string on the end of the third beat. Here's what that sounds like. Three and. Three and. Next on beat four, pluck the third fret of the C string. And finally, on the first beat of the second measure, pluck the open C string and let it ring out for all four beats. This gives us a lick that sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four, one, two, three, four. Awesome, remember to take this nice and slow at first. In the early stages, it's all about getting your fingers used to the movements. Now let's finish off the lick. This lick is based on the idea of call and response. So the last half of the lick responds to the first half. Let's learn this last half. On beat one of the third measure of the lick, perform the slide up again from the second fret to the third fret like so. A one and. Then on beat two, pluck the third fret of the E string. Then for beat three, pluck the first fret of the E string on the number beat and the third fret of the E string on the end of the beat like so. Three and. Three and. Then for beat four, pluck the first fret of the bottom A string. And finish off the lick by plucking the third fret of the bottom A string on the first beat of measure four. That gives us a last half that sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four, one, two, three, four. And when you put it all together with the first half, you get a four bar blues lick that sounds like this counted slowly.
one and two and three and four and one and two three and four one two three four one and two three and four one two three four once you have that down you can play this lick over the 12 bar blues in C like this All right, I hope this is giving you some ideas. Remember to take this really slow at first and count out loud. You might need to spend quite a bit of time just practicing counting and playing the lick before adding in that backing track. That's quite normal. The more you build this lick into your muscle memory, the more it becomes a lick that will forever be a part of your lick vocabulary. So here's how I want you to apply the 15 minute play to learn method today and what I want you to spend at least 15 minutes on. In the first five minutes, warm up and practice the C blues scale I taught in the last video. In the second five minutes, begin to drill out this lick, repeating it over and over again while counting out loud, embedding it into your muscle memory. And then in the last five minutes, cue up the jam track, which you can download via the link in the description of this video, and try your hand at playing this lick over the track. Additionally, be sure to experiment with that slide technique to see if you can come up with your own blues licks. Forming a complete solo is all about drawing from the blues scale all across the fretboard and building up your vocabulary of licks and riffs, which is exactly what we do in my upcoming course, Blues Tricks. This course is going to launch in a few days, so make sure you keep your eyes open. This upcoming course is the most easy to follow step-by-step -step instruction on going from beginner to playing proficiently in the blues style with the 15 minute play to learn method. Because I show you exactly what to practice and how to practice, you can see clear progress and express yourself in the style of the blues. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you click the link under this video and put your name on the early bird waitlist. Everyone on the early bird waitlist will get access to the registration link the night before the program opens to the public. I'll also send you that blues backing track so you can practice this lick. So again, make sure you put your name and email address on the early bird waitlist so I know you're interested. Just click the link below this video, enter your details, and your spot will be reserved and you'll get early access to the program. All right, I have one more video in this series where I'll unpack the steps you need to take to proficiently strum, solo, and play songs in the style of the blues on ukulele, which I'll be sending out to those of you on the early bird waitlist. You won't want to miss that video because I show you exactly what steps you have to take to achieve your goal of soloing the blues on ukulele. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.